Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more R slash Amada Butthole. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, and let's just crack on with today's first story. Now, today's first story does come with a couple of updates. If you've heard the original before, feel free to use the timestamps to skip to the updates if you'd like and it's titled am i the asshole for telling my son he has to take his clothes to the laundry mat my wife and i have a 20 year old son jake jake's personal hygiene when it comes to clothing has taken a steep nosedive over the last year or so he showers regularly but he will only clean his clothes once a month sometimes even longer than that and it's never an overly full basket so he's literally wearing the same dirty clothes including underwear and socks over and over again we've tried to talk to him about how this can affect his health and asked if he's feeling depressed or needs to talk to someone but he insists he's fine and he just doesn't have time or want to run the washer every week towards the end of the month he smells awful no matter how often he showers since he's an adult, we can't force him to do his laundry more often, and my wife won't even go near his bedroom and do it for him, nor should she have to. Here is the current issue. Whenever Jake does eventually end up doing laundry, the machine ends up stinking like, I don't even know, a sewer, rotting flesh, something terrible that I can't even describe. Afterwards, and my wife has to run two clean cycles, one with bleach and one with a washer cleaning pod just to get the smell out before we can use it again. If she doesn't clean it, our clothes will smell like that, so it takes four hours to basically reset our machine every time he does laundry. We told Jake that if he continues to insist to only do laundry once a month, then he will need to start taking it to a laundry mat because we refuse to continue to have to sanitize our machine because he doesn't want to do it more often. We feel this is a fair compromise to extend the life of our washing machine and our sanity. Jake works full time and doesn't pay any type of rent so that he can save up for his own place and he has a car. There are three laundry mats within a five minute drive of our house. So it's not like we're making him go far to do laundry or that is something that he wouldn't be able to afford. And if he were to start being more responsible and clean his clothes on a weekly basis, it wouldn't even be an issue to let him use the machine. But his clothes are so disgusting we are concerned about what else it might be doing to our washer other than leaving a horrid permeating smell. Jake told my parents and they think we're assholes and told Jake to bring his clothes to them and his grandmother will wash them for him and Jake is currently not speaking with us. I don't feel like we're assholes, but my wife is hurt and starting to consider backing down. So she wanted me to post. Are we assholes for making our adult son take his laundry to the laundromat instead of using our home washer? edit to add this is really the only issue jake has he works hard he has a lot of friends and is very social he helps around the house when asked he takes care of his own bill car payment insurance phone etc he is outside of this one thing a pretty responsible kid he just insists he hates doing laundry sees it as a waste of time and won't do it more than once a month my wife even suggested in the past that he just buy enough clothing even just socks and boxes to last him a month if he wants to only do laundry that often. But he said that he'd have to do two loads at that point. It's like this is the hill he's willing to die on, but it's just such a smelly one. <laughs> now, I feel like this is an instant not the arsehole. I mean, he's making your washing machine smell, making you do like twice the amount of work, sanitizing the machine after because the machine stinks. That has got to be putrid smelling. And it just kind of left me wondering, do the grandparents have, you know, the full story of what's actually going on here? And I kind of want to say, you know, just let them wash their clothes then and eventually they'll learn the same situation as you. And, you know, it's not right to leave your machine stinking like that. And Jake needs to be taking responsibility for his own hygiene. And I do wonder what his friends are thinking in the background and, and if they're actually bothered by this or not as well. But a deleted user says the worst thing you can do is back down. He found a solution that is his grandparents. Let that go on for a while and see how it goes. Meanwhile, you and your wife should have a conversation about giving Jake a due date to move out and be on his own. Not the arsehole. 
Frightmare says not the arsehole. Let grandma wash them since she offered. I can't believe his job hasn't said something about the stench. Adrianka says not the asshole. Washing clothes once a month and being stinky due to that is not normal. I don't believe your son's excuse about being too busy. Most adults have full-time jobs. Some are also parents and students and manage to wash their clothes every week or a few times a week. OP replies saying, I don't get it. My wife and I both work full-time and we both have hobbies. We still manage to do a full load once a week. Revro says not the arsehole. I somehow think that Jake hasn't shared the whole story with his grandparents. Once the machine starts stinking, I suspect their attitude may change. Meanwhile, Jake needs to start thinking about how well any future housemates are going to take it when he stinks it up around them. Downtown Age says not the arsehole. Your son sounds disgusting. Seriously, who doesn't wash their clothes regularly? I would do the same. To which Opie replies saying, the crazy thing is he's very particular about his appearance. The clothes, although dirty, are nice. He does his hair every day, brushes his teeth, wears deodorant and cologne. You wouldn't know by looking at him that he's wearing weeks old underwear. <laughs> I guess everyone has that one thing that they irrationally just hate to do and his is laundry, but it just boggles my mind. So now we're gonna move on to the update to find out what happened next. And this update came roughly a month later, which said, I appreciate all the comments and judgments received. I felt I should provide an update as it's been nearly a month and another wash day for Jake has come to pass. Many of you mentioned to just let my mother do his laundry and she'd find out why we banned him from using our washer. And you were right. I was not present when he brought his laundry to her house, but she called me directly after saying that her and Jake got into an argument because she kept asking him what was wrong with him that he would wear such dirty clothing. She apparently asked if he was depressed, if he needed help, etc. In the end, he yelled at her that nothing is wrong and he doesn't understand why everyone is at him all the time over some goddamn clothes. He said he feels like laundry is pointless. He doesn't shit or pee himself and, and he's not out doing manual labor and getting everything dirty. So he doesn't understand why it even matters and he took his still dirty clothes and left. When he came home a few hours later, his clothes were clean. So I'm assuming he must have taken them to a laundromat. Later that night, he told his mother and I that he has decided to move in with a friend whose roommate is leaving at the end of next month and that he's tired of us being in his business and lecturing him about dumb shit. That doesn't matter. I love my son, but to be honest, I feel relieved. I do think as many of you pointed out that we were coddling him a bit and we were starting to worry about his ability to function as an independent adult. If things stayed the same much longer, I think that having a roommate will force him to take some more responsibility for his own cleanliness and maybe give him an idea of what it's like to have to coexist with adults who aren't family. I mentioned in my comments that my wife and I were planning to sell the house and make a move in the next few years. But with Jake deciding to move out, we now think it's actually a good time. The market is red hot. Her job announced they're downsizing the office and anyone who wants to permanently work from home is welcome to. And my employer has a couple of openings coming up out west that will be good fit for me. And they're always happy to work with people who want to relocate. Once Jake moves out, we're going to assess the state of his room, fix some things up and list it, appliances included. My wife is worried about leaving Jake, but I think she has come to acknowledge that he needs to do this and that ultimately, if anything were to happen, would be a plane ride away. Plus, it will undoubtedly take a few months to get the house ready to sell and a new job lined up. So he should be more established in his new place by the time we move. Again, I appreciate all the advice we received and the reality checks. This was surprisingly helpful. Just wanted to throw a quick edit because I see a few people judging us for moving. I want to be very clear. We're not moving to run away from our son. It has always been our intention to leave New York and move somewhere warmer once he got his own place. We just anticipated on him staying a couple more years to save more money for his own apartment slash house. This has been something we've been planning for the last decade, but his decision and the knowledge that my wife won't have to spend some time looking for a new job somewhere else has sped up this process. Also, some people seem to be under the impression that we can somehow force Jake into therapy. We cannot. He may be our child, but he is also legally an adult. 
we're not able to make him go to the doctors or see a therapist and he is refuting that there is anything wrong. You can't bake as axe someone for wearing dirty clothes and not wanting to do laundry. All we can do is repeatedly ensure him that we support him if he needs to speak to someone. We've already offered to pay for therapy, take him to therapy, attend therapy with him if he wants it. He insists there is nothing wrong with him and he just hates doing laundry. We don't know how we could have raised him in a way to avoid this because this problem didn't arise until he became a full-fledged adult. Maybe because now he knows we can't ground him if he doesn't clean his clothes or something. I don't know. But I understand that some people will still place the blame on us regardless. I'd love to hear some actual explanation on what you would have done differently other than therapy or doctor because again, he will not go and we cannot force him. And we have one more further update on this one, but I just wanted to come in on this one. I think OP was right for what their decision and possibly moving out. This is the right time to do it, etc. I think it's all a good thing. And I think that I agree with them that, you know, Jake moving out to go with his roommate would be a good decision as well. And hopefully a learning experience for him because I can't see roommate putting up with this shit. Maybe they will. And obviously I don't know if they're gonna have washing appliances there, but if they do and that starts stinking up because of what Jake's doing, I wouldn't put up with that shit and hopefully roommate wouldn't either. And don't get me wrong. No one wants to hear that they stink from someone else. But I feel like, you know, the parents have given him enough opportunity to think, yeah, maybe my clothes do stink and I need to take, you know, more care of my personal hygiene. But unfortunately, I think he's going to find out in a more brutal way now. Possibly. I don't know. We'll find out in the update. So let's move on over to there to find out what happened next. OP says, posting this on my profile because am I the arsehole doesn't allow for more than one update and I felt this was an appropriate addition to the saga that we thought was over. Where we left off, Jake has told us he planned to move in with his friend June 1st. Wife and I decided to speed up our out of state move that we had been planning for two to three years from now. Over the last month, my wife and I have been working to fix up the house to put it on the market. Just little things for now fresh paint, filling in nail holes, deep cleaning, decluttering, etc. As we've been doing this, we've been trying to talk to Jake about his plans. Where does his friend live? Can he afford the rent? Is he taking his furniture? Does he need any help? And he's been less than forthcoming with information. We chalked it up to him still being angry about the situation, so we've been giving him some space. With the smaller stuff pretty well taken care of, we've decided to move on to some bigger projects that are needed. And this weekend, we went to look at some flooring options. We found some samples that we liked and the salesperson said they booked us an appointment to have someone come out and measure so that we can get an accurate quote before committing to anything. We agreed but said we'd call to set up a time because we didn't want it to interfere with Jake packing up and moving. So we got back home and asked again about what his timeline is. We said no worries if you have to leave some stuff here. We just want to make sure there isn't some random person in your personal space if you are trying to move. We can schedule this for later next month. He started yelling about how we're kicking him out and making him homeless, which was news to us. I said that he was the one who told us that he was leaving. So I'm not sure how he got to that scenario in his head. He said that he was never actually planning on moving out, that he thought that telling us that he was would scare us and would leave him alone and beg him to stay. He admitted that he was basically going to try and leverage the threat of leaving into having his mum and I do his laundry as a bribe to not go. He didn't think would actually be okay with it and even go as far to decide to up and move away and that he was surprised and hurt. I didn't even get a chance to react before my wife took a deep breath and said, well, I guess we're both surprised and hurt because I never thought my child would lie in order to manipulate me. I think this shook Jake a lot. He had a look on his face like he was just slapped. Then he said, so you're really going to push me out over dirty clothes? To which I replied that we're not pushing him out over dirty clothes and we're not pushing him out at all. He has decided he no longer can live within the confines of our rules and respect our home. He has had two years to save up for his own place. He needs to start being independent and his mother and I need to stop getting in the way of that and simultaneously letting him stomp on our boundaries. I told him that there's still a lot to do with the house. He's welcome to stay until it gets put up for sale. We're hoping by fall, but after that, he needs to find a place. He's welcome to follow us to wherever we end up 
but he will not be living with us there. He didn't say another word and stomped off to his room. We felt bad about the whole situation, but we knew that this was something he needed to hear and that we needed to say. A few hours later, he came back and told us that he's sorry and he understands. He said he vented to some of his friends and the general consensus was that he's an idiot to have blown his free ride, their words, not mine, over laundry and he sees that now too. He said that he's open to potentially moving, but it really depends on where we decide to go. We have a few cities we're interested in and plan on making some weekend trips to determine where we feel comfortable. This is a weird situation, by the way. Moving somewhere where we have no ties and relying off of statistics in our gut. But it's all part of the adventure. But that his friend really does have a roommate that is leaving, although not so soon. So he's going to talk to him about moving in for real and then go from there. Also, we did carefully broach the subject of counseling again. It's still a no, but he has agreed to start washing his clothes bi-weekly if we let him use the washer again. Turns out he really hated the laundromat. We agreed on the condition that he throw away all socks and underwear and we'll buy him two weeks worth of new ones so he can quite literally start fresh. <laughs> Grim. But for those who wanted an answer as to why he was so resistant, he doesn't have one either. He's still just adamant it was a mix of hating laundry, insisting that he doesn't get that dirty and admitted a little bit of rebellion because he felt like we couldn't tell him what to do anymore until we did, but we're at least happy for the compromise. I doubt there'll be another update, but I wanted to thank everyone for your feedback, both the positive and negative. There were many people that pointed out we enabled Jake and let it get to this point and that we should have put our foot down when this first started being an issue. And you are not wrong. We do see that. We thought parenting was hard when he was still a kid. Parenting in an adult seems damn near impossible. But we needed the reminder that this is ultimately our home and we are still within our rights to have boundaries. So thank you for that, truly. It cracked me up in the middle of that update where it said, you know, he said that he's open to potentially moving, but it really depends on where we decide to go. I thought he was being cheeky enough to like, you know, I'm not going there. We have to decide on somewhere else. That's not good for me. <laughs> but the dude actually pulled, you know, I'm going to run away from home and hopefully they beg me to come back, you know, like a child does. And I don't know if you guys heard of this meme, but it was like some years back, King Curtis, it was on some show where the parents swap or something like that. And King Curtis loves his bacon and, you know, she wasn't cooking bacon that day or she was throwing some stuff in the trash and, you know, he said he's going to run away. It reminded me of that situation, strangely, for some reason. King Curtis, some like seven, eight year old or whatever he is, he goes like, I'm running away to grandma's house because she ain't going to chase me in those little high heels. <laughs> But what do you guys make of this one? How would you deal with Jake in that situation? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and let's move on to a cheeky little story. And our next story comes from Yes I Said That who says, am I the asshole for changing all the locks in my house without letting my mum know? When I, 23 male, was 15, my dad died. My mum, 45, didn't wait too long to start over and moved a new partner in just two months later. My dad left everything to me and not even a dime to her. They were not married. My dad's will was so structured that she couldn't challenge it and she attempted and even asked me to pass over one of my properties to her to show my new dad that he was welcomed. I couldn't even if I wanted to because my dad's will was specified that I must be 21 to have access to everything he left me. This dude has kids, 18 male, 19 female their ages now and my mum prioritized them to keep him happy. I mean, she wasn't like abusive or neglectful, but she tended to favor them. They went on trip and even if she didn't tell me not to go, she'd say something between the lines as, wouldn't you like to go to your grandparents? My dad's better. I mean, I'm not stupid and I know she didn't want me there. When I turned 17, she asked me to leave my own house because I kept fighting with her dude and I also reminded him of whose house it was. When he wanted to play the man of the house, I also called him John Conroy. My grandparents told me to avoid confrontation, so I went to live with them. My mum would visit me often and tell me how much she loved but needed to keep peace at home. After college, I decided to check my properties and also the one that my mum is living at. I wanted to renovate it to rent it since it's a good one and can help me to afford my masters. 
I went there to inform my mum, but no one was there. Later, I found out they went on vacation. I called her, but she didn't answer, so I proceeded to change the locks, mainly to officially take possession. They arrived yesterday and could get in, of course. They called me, but I wasn't in town. I went today because some renovation work will start in a few weeks. I was in the backyard and my mum came in furious, yelling at me, how dare I do that? So we talked and I let them know they have two weeks to leave. Her husband, an unemployed, oh, sorry, self-employed, was furious. My mum and her stepdaughter started crying because the girl is pregnant. I'm sorry, but I made up my mind. My mum's family is shaming me, but I'd like to know if you think I'm the arsehole. My mum called me today saying we can talk. Edit, I'm not in the USA. Not really looking for legal advice. Guys, life out of the USA exists. <laughs> there are 194 other countries in the world. Now I gotta say at the very start of this story, it did leave me curious that, you know, your dad left everything to you, not even a dime. And you know, it was so structured that she couldn't challenge it. I, I was curious of what was going on there. But I don't feel like you're the arsehole in the situation. They're your properties. You sound like you've, had, you've been absolutely treated like shit in the past. And I know at the very end, you said there, you're not really looking for legal advice. And I'm not obviously not going to provide that, but it did leave me concerned. You know, I've heard people that you have to give them, you know, a certain amount of time to, to, to move out. I know that's in the UK. And in some places, if you've lived in a certain place for X amount of time, you sort of like established yourself, etc. Again, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I just know some of it's there in some countries. So that would leave me certainly concerned for OP in that respect. But GJ says, not the asshole, because of a minor, you were kicked out of your house and made a secondary priority. As an adult, you're now doing what you couldn't do then. Make sure you're doing everything legally so they can't make things harder on you. I'm wondering if your father knew something and that's why you got everything. Capybara says you may want a lawyer. They are your tenants and there are laws and procedures which have to be followed to evict them. They vary by local area. Are you the arsehole? A bit, not for deciding to kick them out, but for changing the locks on them without warning. And then pretty much every other comment was saying, you know, about the legal procedures and, you know, you need a lawyer more than anything, not am I the arsehole. But what do you guys make of this situation? What would you do in it? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, as always, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, support and time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And if you want to support the channel further, never any pressure to do so, but I thought I'd mention it as there's been some stuff going on within the narration community just recently and YouTube doing their usual thing about it. You can join over on Patreon. Link is down in the description below. Super helps out the channel, but never expected either. You just being here is more than enough. So thank you so much and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care guys. Much love. Wake up, get up, get up. stretch my Lays, eat some breakfast, milk and eggs, brush my teeth up, wash my face, throw my clothes on, start my day, wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon, let's go, see the sun shining from the windows, okay, I know that's a damn